Hello everyone. Good afternoon. Um, we're here with David Feeks. He's the attorney and owner of the Parents Estate Planning Law Firm in Acton and we're here answering your questions. As always, the last Tuesday of every month. We're just going to give everyone a few moments to get logged on. And if you're logged on already, if you could give us a like and let us know that you're there and you can hear us, that would be great. In the meantime, David will, will smile patiently at us <laughs> while we wait for everyone to join us. Okay, so if you're there, go ahead and give us a like and let us know that you're listening. Great, wonderful. Okay, so for those just joining us, we're here today with David Feeks. He's the attorney and owner of the Parents Estate Planning Law Firm here in Acton, Massachusetts. So David's live the final Tuesday of every month uh, talking about estate planning for busy, busy parents out there providing tips, educating us, and, and most of all, answering your questions, your burning questions. So welcome everyone and thanks for joining us. Uh, so David, this month you've been writing in your blog and your e-magazine about how to start the estate planning conversation with your friends and family. Uh, so can you share a little bit about that with those watching? Yeah, um, generally I would say there's pretty much two categories of people that you would be talking about uh, about your estate planning or whether if you're thinking about uh, estate planning one is to your friends and the other is potentially to your family um, I'll do the family part first because that one I think is a little is easier not mu as much to talk about generally and we work a lot with families with young kids um, and so what I find is that clients will ask me how do I start this conversation with my parents how do I start this conversation with my family now that we've got our planning done, I want to know what my parents have in place. So, but how do I get that started? And generally, I would say the way to start that conversation with your family is that either if you've gotten the planning done or if you're thinking about getting the planning done, that is an entry point for that conversation. Mom and dad, you know, siblings, we have gotten our planning done or we're in the process of getting our planning done or we're getting ready to get our planning done. And it's gotten us thinking about what you have in place as well. Because let's face it, once you know what's going to happen um, to your assets if something happens to you, it naturally makes you think about what's going to happen if something happens to your parents and what is the situation that you're going to be uh, dealing with or are going to be left with. So it's an important conversation. But generally, I would say that that's a good foothold into that conversation is we're thinking about our planning or we're getting our planning done. And that made us think about kind of what you had in place or we're putting a trust together. Do you have something like that in place too? Because we found it really interesting about all of the things that trust can do for our family. Um, that can happen, you know, we've just gotten through the holidays. That tends to happen around a Thanksgiving table or, you know, at Christmas time or at New, uh, New Year's. But any family gathering um, where you're kind of sitting around a table in, a, in close proximity uh, is probably a good time to, to start that conversation. And then the other kind of category of people, the people that you'll be talking about this with or will be wanting to talk about this with is your friends. Um, here's what I do with all of my clients and I do this in all of the workshops and webinars that I teach as well and that is I actively encourage the people who are learning to go out into the community and be ambassadors for what they've learned. And here's what I know and I know that a lot of people are like yeah but it's kind of a dark topic and we're really talking about death and I don't want to sound morbid and I don't want to be bringing death up in a conversation. Here's the thing. Here's what you need to know. Here's what I know and here's what I'd like to share with you. And that is everybody that you know is walking around thinking about this in one way or another. Every parent of young children is walking around thinking what's going to happen to my kids if something happens to me. And every single one of them knows that there's something they need to be doing. But here's the thing. They don't know what that is. They don't know how to ask the questions. They don't know where to start. They don't know how to get started. And if you can start that conversation with your friends, you can show them the way. You can talk about your experiences. You can talk about the things you've learned. You can talk about the questions you now know you need to ask so that they can learn the things they need to know, the questions they need to ask, and where they can get started as well. Listen, you know, I have kids too, not so young anymore, but from the moment our first daughter was born, there was a little nagging beeping that went off in my head 
that was basically telling me 24 hours a day, all day, every day, there's something you need to be doing to protect your child. There's something you need to be doing. And every parent walks around with that little subconscious kind of nagging going on. And it bugs them, and they want to take care of it, they just don't know how to take care of it. So the best thing that you can do as a friend is share your experience. Talk about what you've done. Talk about what you're thinking about doing. Talk about what you've learned at a workshop or a webinar. Um, and share those experiences. They will be happy that you did it. And you don't have to talk about it in a negative way. You can just talk about it as an experience that you've had. Because here's the thing. Estate planning when you have young kids is all about making a better life and a better future for your kids. So we don't have to approach the conversation, you know, here's the plan I put together in case I die. It's here's the plan I put together to make a better future for my kids, to make sure that my kids have everything they need no matter what. And I think that is an easy way to start that, to start that conversation. Okay, great. Um, so for those of us that are just joining us, I saw a few more people have logged on. Um, we're here with David Feeks from the Parents Estate Planning Law Firm in Acton, and we're talking about how to have a conversation about estate planning with the people in your life um, that you love and you care about. Um, and actually, David, there's um, a couple questions here people are submitting, so I'll encourage those. We'll answer what we can now in, the, in our allotted time, but um, if you find that this brings up questions for you, please post them in the comments. Um, we'll take the time to answer every question. Um, uh, hopefully we can get through most of them here. If not, we'll um, respond to you uh, in the comments via Facebook. Um, so Deb uh, is asking for tips on how to break the ice because she wants to tell more people. A good way to, I mean, one way to break the ice is to relate uh, a story that, that you might know. You know, somebody that you know that something happened to or a personal story that's happened to you. Because um, that kind of humanizes the experience. I often tell the story of my nephew uh, when, he was in his, when he was out of college in his early 20s, still living in Washington, D.C., uh, was involved in a, a bicycle accident late at night when he was alone um, and didn't really have anything in place. And he was seriously injured. Um, and eventually my sister and my brother-in-law got a call from my niece who was going to still going to college in D.C. at the time uh, that said that something had happened to my nephew. Uh, but by the time my sister and my brother-in-law had driven all the way from Connecticut down to D.C., when they got to the hospital, they found that the hospital wouldn't share information with them including whether or not my nephew was ad even admitted to the hospital. Um, and very likely, if my nephew had had the documents in place that we recommend to our clients who have children who are 18 years of age or older, they would have been able to find out all of the information right at the beginning. Now, ultimately, they were able to find everything out and uh, were involved in making decisions, but it, but it wasn't immediate, and it was upsetting to them that they couldn't find out all the information that they needed right from right from the get-go. But that's an example of a personal story that I tell, and most people have a story that they can tell as a way to say, hey, this is something that I know happened, it got me thinking about this, and that's a way to kind of segue into that conversation. Great, thank you. Um, so as we all know, um, events in the neighborhood can also be a great way to share information with your friends as well. And we just happen to have one coming up. Um, so for those of you who have more burning questions, um, of course, you could always call our office and speak to uh, Paula and David directly. Um, but if uh, you'd like to come and see David speak at more length about these and other estate planning issues, you can join us at Loch Ness Play Center in Chelmsford on February 19th and bring a friend and learn about it. Absolutely. Uh, so you can visit our website, www.parentsestateplanning.com for more information. Um, or as always, uh, get in touch with us uh, via phone. Uh, thanks for joining us. David, thanks for sharing that information. You bet. And uh, we'll see everyone next month. Take care. Go Pats.